So you're just chilling, feeding your aquarium, everything's going great, when all of a sudden you're looking and you see a little something. So you look kind of closer, a little bit closer. It said closer! And, oh, hey, uh, it's just some algae. So you do what any normal human does, you go on your computer and you search up how to get rid of algae. And you find out that you can actually add another fish to the aquarium to get rid of the algae. So you grab your wallet and your keys, you hop in your little vehicle, you take your happy butt on down to the closest pet store. You go in, you find the fish section, you find what you're looking for, you say one please, and then you get your little fish, release it in the aquarium and think nothing of it. Until one day you're scrolling and all of a sudden you see a video like this and you click on it and then... Pleco, algae eater, Plecostomus, shelled catfish, whatever it is that you want to call it, this fish goes by a ton of different names. The scientific name though is Hypostomus Plecostomus, or if you want to get really fun, Hypostomus Plecostomus. This is one of the most popular aquarium fish in the entire world. Most people have heard of them at least, and another huge proportion of people have had them before in their home aquarium. The Pleco is originally found in fast moving streams and riverbeds in South America. It feeds on a variety of decaying plant material material, algae, all that kind of fun stuff. They're literally bottom feeders. They're extremely popular in home aquariums for whatever reason. They claim that they just eat all the algae off of the walls of the tank and that way you don't have to do any work but it goes a little bit deeper than just plopping them in the aquarium and forgetting about them. Plecos are deadly, horrific beasts. Now, not actually, but they can cause a lot of issues. First off, odds are if you get a pleco, you're not gonna be able to care for it for its entire life for a variety of reasons. First off, when you plop them in your tank, they'll eat all of the algae, like literally overnight. You'll say, oh, this is great problem solved, but then they're still hungry. Odds are you're actually gonna end up having to feed the pleco with algae wafers or different, like people boil vegetables sometimes and plop them in the tank. They need to be fed. You can't just like plop them in the tank and forget about them. So if your pleco doesn't starve, it's going to start to grow and it's not going to stop until it's literally 12 to 24 inches. Plecos get huge. So why is the pet store employee selling you a fish that's this big when they know that it's going to get this big for a tank that's only this big? So not only do most people not consider that they have to feed the pleco, it then gets absolutely huge. And also they don't solve the algae issue. You see, algae is formed because there's extra nutrients in the water. These are called nitrates. The plecos eat the algae and then what happens? What do they do? They poop. And then what happens when that poop breaks down? It creates more nutrients in the water, which then feeds the algae, which the pleco then eats. But then there's just, it gets bigger and just keeps producing more and more waste. And then there's more and more algae. It's very uncommon for you to get the perfect balance between the amount of algae that's produced and the amount of algae that it's eating. Odds are it's either gonna be hungry or there's gonna be too much algae. It's great. It's just great. So now you've got a fish that gets absolutely massive, needs to be supplemented with its diet, will not actually solve your algae issues, and you're basically screwed. It's just a whole bunch of different factors that they never talk to you about, but here comes the best part about plecos. What happens when they get absolutely huge and people don't know what to do with them? Same thing with your little quarter right here slider that grew to 12 inches. You release it in your local waterways, which is so wrong. Because plecos, like I said, are from South America. They can only handle tropical temperatures. So once the winter comes, your pleco is dead. Unless you live in the South. If you live in the South, well, they might just take over every single freaking waterway from California to South Florida, freaking everywhere, everywhere. And they are ecological disasters. They're nukes with armored plating. <laughs> Nothing really eats them. The, at best, alligators and osprey might eat them, but again, they have those armored plates. They're tough to crack, literally. Not only that, but they like the muddy bottoms and they will eat the freaking plant matter on the sides of the riverbanks and end up causing tons of erosion. If you look closely at like water ditches down in Florida, you can see that they're just eroding out from the plecos. Not only that, there's places where these native fish will go to hide or stay warm when it gets cold in Florida, natural springs outside of nuclear power plants. It's not a joke, it's legit. And so those waterways where like things like manatees will go to spend the winter time and stay warm are now filled with plecos. I've 
seen it for myself. I've been to these springs and you just see monster plecos. They've got to be this freaking big. They are huge and there's tons and tons of footage of them everywhere. They're out competing native species. They're causing high turbidity in the water. They're stirring up all the mud and whatnot because they just chew on the freaking ground. These fish are ecological disasters with fins. So now you've basically got an armored vehicle of a fish that has no native predators, is out competing a whole bunch of little native minnows and things that actually eat the algae, that rely on the plant matter and whatnot in these local waterways. And now the plecos are breeding and just taking over these areas. So if you're dead set on wanting and getting an algae eater, guess what? It's not all bad. There's tons of species that only get like this big that you can find and you can get. Just avoid the darn plecos. They're disasters. Or even better, there's no fish, like I said, that will solve your algae problem. You literally just scrape the sides and then do a water change. When you remove those nitrates, you remove the source of food that the algae is eating and then you can't have any algae anymore. Oh my God, what's that? I actually have to do work to keep my aquarium. Whoa, I can't just add more fish to it. No, you cannot. Silly gooses. If you guys like turtles, I don't do fish a lot. I usually do turtles. I have babies that are uh, incubating that are due to hatch in like 30 or so days. So subscribe if you want to see that. Later.